Good morning. Welcome to Faith for Finances in Ford. It's Karen Ford here. I invite you to like, comment, and share. Let's talk about money today. Now, here's where the rubber meets the road. Many times people will sow, and I am all about sowing. I'm all about tithing. But herein lies a potential problem. Some people think that they're going to get an anointing. They think they're going to reap what they sow. And that's true. That's biblical. But can we really expect to reap what we sow if we're not walking in obedience or doing what we need to do? Let me explain what I mean by that. The two men that built the houses, one built on the sand and one built on the rock. The storms came, the rains came, the winds came on both houses, but the only one that remained standing was the one that was built on the rock. What was the difference between these two men? The storms came to both, and they both built, but one dug deeper to hit the rock and that was the one that was a doer of the word, not just a hearer. See, in other words, we can hear the revelation, we can hear the word, but unless we do it, we are really missing the mark. We can, I am all about calling it and hauling it, blabbing it and grabbing it, quoting it and toting it. I am all about that. But we can do that all day long, but if we're not tithing, can we really expect that to happen? Uh-oh. <laughs> See, God said God can't go against his word. He's not a man that he should lie. He's going to keep his word. And part of his word in Malachi 3 is, if you will tithe and and so, when you do that, I will open the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing upon you of which you cannot contain. He, God is not under any obligation to pour out blessings upon us if we're not tithing, if we're not walking in obedience. So many times we sow money to a particular uh, person uh, for an anointing. Maybe they have an anointing of prosperity. They have an anointing of wealth. We may be sowing into a particular person, but if we're not doing our part, see, it has to go together. Faith is an action. It's not enough to, to sow money, and that's faith, certainly. But are we tithing? Are we working the word, right? Because death and life is in the power of the tongue. Those who love it shall eat the fruit thereof. We have to be a doer of the word, not a hearer only. They both have to be in agreement. They both have to work. And I think of a sower in the natural. If I go outside and I sow some seed, tomato seed, corn seed, what have you, but I don't ever go out and maintain that garden. I don't ever go out and pull the weeds. I don't ever go out and water it. Am I really, should I really expect a harvest? Now, God, in his grace and in his goodness and in his mercy, we might reap a little bit of something, but we're short, we're shortening ourselves when we don't do what we need to do. Does that make sense? See, we can sow, but if we don't do what we need to do, can we really expect a harvest? I know this sounds like a harsh word, <laughs> and that is really not uh, my intent. But I don't want to delude ourselves, and people delude themselves all the time, thinking, well, I'm going to sow into this ministry, I'm going to sow into that ministry, and I'm going to do this, and I'm going to do that. But if we are walking in disobedience, to God's word, can we expect him to keep his word? He can't go against his word. Malachi 3 says, you're robbing me. Now, let me look at this in the natural. If you're in your home and somebody comes and robs you and you know who it is, are you going to want to give them <laughs> anything? I can tell you that if somebody robbed me, I'm probably not going to entrust them with some things to take care of. They've already robbed me. So in other words, if we're robbing God by tithing and not giving the offerings that he has instructed us to do, is he going to entrust us with more? 
Probably not. The parable of the talents. We saw, see a person got five talents, a person got two talents, and a person got one talent. The five, person with five talents doubled it. The person with two talents doubled it. The person with one talent hid it. Did that did that person who hired those three give to the person who had one talent and buried it? Did he give him more? Did he entrust him with more? No. In fact, the one that got the one talent, he called him a wicked and evil servant. And he took that one talent away and gave it to the other person that doubled it. All right, this sounds like a hard word. That's not my intent. I'm just giving you something to chew on. And I don't have his book here with me. I thought I brought it in with me. Let me encourage you. Uh, my spiritual father, Dr. John Polis, has written a phenomenal book, How to Produce Abundance in Your Life. This is a powerful book. You can get it on Amazon. You can go to his website, John Polis Ministries. He's got scads of stuff on there. I encourage you to visit that site and make some purchases. All right, that book will change your life if you if you apply the principles in that book, How to Produce Abundance in Your Life. I will put the link in the comment line below this video. God bless you. Have a great day.